Suppose you have a function g of x between f of x and h of x. And suppose furthermore that the limits of f and h in a certain point are equal to value l. So we have our g in between f and h, and f and h both approach the same value l. And that's uh, in that case the function g cannot escape, it is squeezed between f and h to the same value l. This idea is known as the squeeze theorem, and it can be used to compute some limits which we could not compute before. In this video we will encounter the theorem and we will use it straight away to compute the limit. So what do we have? We have some g squeezed in between f and h, and here some uh, number a, and furthermore the limits of f and h have to be equal to the same number l. In that case our g cannot escape and limit x to a of g also equals l. So how does that look graphically? So why is that true? So we have our f, the lowest curve over here, we have our h, our highest curve over there, and g over here in between. So what happens if x approaches a? Well then uh, the limit of f and h are both l, and as you see our poor g cannot escape, it's squeezed in between the two curves. So the limit x to a of uh, g also equals l. So uh, uh, why is that? How could you uh, how, how could you do that more formally? Uh, well, f and h both get arbitrarily close to l. Uh, g is between f and g, so uh, closer to uh, this value l than the maximum of f and g, and that is why uh, g also gets arbitrarily close to l. And if you want, you can make this a bit more precise with the epsilons and deltas. But this is the idea. So how can we use that? For example, if we have this function x squared times sine of 1 over x. Well, the sine of 1 over x, if x goes to 0, is uh, really nasty. Because we get basically sine of infinity and the sine is oscillating all the time around. So we cannot use uh, the uh, product rule in this case. Because then we ha would have the limit of uh, x to 0 of x squared. Well, that part is fine. But also times the limit x to 0 of sine 1 over x. And that does not exist because the sign is oscillating between minus 1 and 1. Hey, but we can use that idea, because as you see the sign of 1 over x, okay, it's oscillating all around, but it is still bounded and the x squared will go to 0. So you have something going to 0 times something bounded. And if you encounter a situation like that, that is when you will often can use the squeeze rule. So what do we do? We know that any sign of real numbers bounded between minus 1 and 1, so we know uh, if we multiply with uh, x squared, which is a positive number, uh, that we have minus x squared smaller equal than x squared times the sine smaller equal than x squared. So our f will be minus x squared, our g will be x squared sine 1 over x, and our h will be x squared. Then, then we can take the limits. If you take limit x to, no, x to 0 of f of x, that's just 0, limit h to x of 0 also equals 0. And then we can conclude that the g is squeezed in between f and h, so the limit x to 0 of g also equals 0.